So as I've been testing out mobile services, like uh, for instance, Google Plus, I keep hitting errors or things that don't work right or features that are missing. And a lot of times it's really hard to give feedback to the teams about what's going on. Well, criticism has a way for developers to solve the feedback problem and we're gonna see it right now. Who are you? Hi, I'm Andrew Levy. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Criticism. I uh, used to work at Hewlett Packard, a really boring cube farm, and then uh, left to start a Y Combinator company called AdThrow. Unfortunately, that didn't work out, and uh, a bit of an incubator junkie. I did Lightspeed's program at the same summer, and then uh, with a different company, with our latest company, actually, I just did AngelPad. And uh, with the motivations behind our current company, we were developing mobile apps, and we'd release an app to the App Store and inevitably it would crash. We'd have users going to the App Store, leaving a bad review or telling us this button shouldn't be there. And there was no way for us to reach out to them and diagnosing those problems was a real pain in the neck. So I, I'm a heavy mobile user. I have 300 apps and I deal with a lot of beta software because every, every uh, developer wants me to try their stuff. And I, I don't have a good way to give feedback on a lot of these, even like an app like the Google Plus app, which kept crashing on me and kept having these freezing problems. So how do you solve that? How do you let users like me give that feedback to the developers so they can fix the bugs? Sure, so we develop an SDK that developers drop in their app, and either as a tab or a button, you select it, up comes our support form where a list of bugs, questions, or ideas appear. Uh, and you can see what the most uh, popular questions are or what the biggest issues are that developers are working on. Uh, we've really found that most of the bad reviews in app stores are really just support requests. So yeah. we're helping you uh, talk with the developer and then they can actually respond. Have you found that that actually cuts down the amount of people who feel so, so angry at their app that they go over and, buy, and write a bad review? Yeah, definitely. I don't uh, have any hard data yet. We will shortly, but at least one of our apps went from three and a half to four and a half stars after integrating us. And it's really, it's not just about letting users uh, submit their um, frustrations in the app. It's also about gathering the right data, uh, the right diagnostics to help the, the developer really figure out what the problem is with the app. Tell me how it looks from the user's point of view. What, what does it add to the app and how do I give feedback? Sure, so it can be, as I said, a tab or a button, you select it, um, you see a list, up comes a list of items that have been submitted. Um, you can select to choose feedback yourself. In that case, as you start typing, it'll search through the list and try to eliminate duplicates for you. Uh, if you do find what you're looking for, you select it, uh, it pulls up a thread of comments that our other users have submitted. And uh, any time that you leave a comment or you start a new thread, we gather all that data I was talking about, uh, almost as if the app had crashed, we gather the same type of data. So are you looking at the logs on the app? Are you looking at the OS? What, what kinds of things are you grabbing when I give a little report? Uh, we gather both hardware and software diagnostic data, uh, all anonymized data. And in fact, we never actually send over the device IDs. We only, only hash those and Apple just deprecated them anyway. Yep. Uh, and so we get things like OS version, memory usage, uh, on iOS, we can even tell if you pirated the app. So a, a whole range of data, including the stack trace and some other some other stuff that really helps the developer figure out what the problem was. Cool. A lot of these apps now are dealing with uh, services that they, the app developer doesn't control. You know, Apple has cloud services, Rackspace has cloud services, and you know, and and there's plenty of other data that could be built into the app. Do you track sort of the state of those other services and sort of say, oh, this is actually a XYZ cloud app problem? Yeah, so we certainly track problems with uh, your network usage and Wi-Fi and 3G. We let developers leave breadcrumbs so they can choose uh, to basically ping out to our server whenever there's an issue and they can use that uh, as event tracking to figure out which specific service was causing the problem. We also are adding support for um, better handling of background threads. So if they're doing something in the background that fails but doesn't necessarily crash the app, we can also tell that was that was a problem. Very cool. So when this report or reports come over to the other side, to the developer's side, what do they see? So they see a list of errors that have occurred over time. 
they can go ahead and triage those, sort them by how many users were affected by this particular problem. Uh, if they choose the, to fix a problem and won't, and won't ever appear in that list again, they can divvy out issues to their team members. If they select an issue, uh, they see the specific crash over time. So where it spiked, maybe they released a new version or a new device came out that caused the problem. Uh, and they can see specific diagnostics around that, that issue. So uh, we really want to answer the question, what did the most common configuration look like among users that experienced the crash? Right. So this, this is things like where most of your users using an iPad or an iPhone, were they on a specific version like iOS 5? Um, and we also let you see a list of users that were affected. So they have started off seeing the big picture of all the crashes, then a particular crash, then specific users. And they can see what other threads they've contributed to, what other crashes those users have experienced. And finally, if you do go ahead and fix the problem, you can send a message out to your users. And this is really important nice. because you can let them know that the problem is fixed. If they've stopped using the app, uh, we can send them a push notification saying, hey, come back, uh, you know, it works again. So. What if the app is totally borked? I mean, with the Google Plus uh, first versions, um, it was really hard for me to even start up the app. It would just freeze. And uh, so it was really hard to even get to the point where I would give some feedback to the developer, right? I, I give it through the Google Plus uh, chat, uh, you know, forums, but how would I get, get in touch with one, one of the developers who's using your uh, software if the app just doesn't even start up? Sure. So if it didn't even start up. Uh, we do automatically or passively gather crash data, so the developer would still be notified that there was a problem. And especially if it was a brand new error, we'd email them or try to get in touch with them right away. Um, we are developing an HTML5 SDK, and so shortly some of this data will be exposed on the web, and developers and or, or users can go ahead and interact with it there. Yeah, this is really smart for developers to put in place before iOS 5 comes out, because I bet that might cause some problems with some apps, right? And you don't know because you haven't tested every, th every single uh, phone out there. Yeah, definitely. We've seen a lot of users use us during beta testing. Uh, and certainly on iOS 5, that'll be a big effort to, to beta test that. And we really even mature apps, apps have been, have been out in the App Store for a while. Whenever a new device comes out, whenever a new OS version gets released, they care, again, about crash, crash reporting and fixing issues. Uh, and especially with growth and things like in-app purchases. If your app's crashing and your user retention's dropping, then you're just, you're just losing money. Yeah. We're, we've been talking mostly about iOS 5, but you have an Android version as well, I believe? Yeah, so we have an Android version. Uh, it's currently being tested with partners. Uh, that will be released shortly. And uh, it has the same functionality as iOS. Actually, even more functionality uh, because of because of the nature of the platform. Yeah, there's a lot more phones and a lot more uh, fragmentation of that platform, right? It's much more important to get this kind of feedback from a, a user that's having problems because I talk to developers all the time and, and they say, I, I don't even have that phone. And so now they have to go out and buy one to make sure that they can serve that user, right? Yeah, definitely. And really what we're looking for is uh, anomalies in, uh, in usage or uh, you know, good a good example is if you had a location-based app that was crashing in the middle of Idaho and there was no restaurants around because you were looking for restaurants, it's not something maybe you notice right away, but it's something that we could elevate to your attention. Oh, very cool. Um, What's your business model? How, how are you going to make money with this? And so we're, we want developers to have this for free, for indie developers uh, to freely use it. We're only charging enterprises at this point, and the way we define an enterprise is if you have over 100,000 monthly active users or up. And below that point, again, it's free. Okay, and how much, so Flipboard, if they want to put in their apps, uh, they have, I think, I don't know, 1.4 million active uniques. Do you get charged per user, or is there just a flat rate once you get over that 100,000? Uh, so we work directly with uh, the customer on pricing, but uh, the way it's set up right now is it's bucketed by user. So if you have 100,000 to say 500,000 users, that would be a bucket and there'd be a monthly flat rate that you'd pay. Okay. Um, some, it would equal some very small amount per user. Okay. Um, tell me about the stats that the developer sees because uh, those were pretty cool to be able to see, oh, oh, you know, all the iOS 5 users are having this problem or, or it's a mixture. Or, well, tell me what you see on, on the dashboard of uh, stats. Yeah, so uh, if you're a stat junkie, you'll love 
uh, looking at our portal, there's we give you live analytics around, uh, so you can see in real time what crashes are occurring or uh, users that are loading your app. You can also, when you're looking at your crashes, you can see uh, crashes over time. You drill down, you can see some pie charts that display, uh, they give you a quick view into what percentage of users are using an iPhone that experienced that, that problem. Um, and also we give you a way in our portal to administer that, that support form. So you can delete, uh, delete entries, add your own if you wanted to pull your users about a new feature. Uh, and you can comment on existing threads. Oh, very cool. Um, this is not just for crashes either. I could say, hey, I, I need this feature uh, and I can put some feedback, right? Yeah, definitely. And we've seen uh, a lot of people use this for that as well. I was mentioning an app that has been out in the App Store for a while. If, if you've gone ahead and fixed a lot of your bugs, you still, uh, especially the product managers, still care about hearing what their users have to say. How can they improve the app? Uh, how can they get keep users engaged? And uh, that that's really important uh, to be able to uh, talk with your users. I think they're really surprised actually when they do hear from someone. They're they're used to an email address that they send an email out to, and it's just a black hole. They don't expect a response. So uh, tell me about how you're funded. So we have some great backers. Uh, we're backed by Connor Perkins, Google Ventures. Uh, Opus Capital, Shasta Ventures, and AOL Ventures. So quite a large group of, of folks, um, all with great backgrounds and backgrounds in mobile. And uh, they really bring a lot in terms of uh, iOS uh, representation for, through the iFund and through um, our, our investor at Opus used to be head of marketing for the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, and on Google Ventures, on of course, it brings Android. So there's a great, great group of backers. So that's a crazy group of backers. It's pretty <laughs> rare you get one of those guys, and much less uh, four or five of them. Um, what do you think is the market size of this? Because it, it seems like everybody in the world is going to have a mobile phone, and, and apps are just white hot and getting hotter. Yeah. yeah, so you know, it's our growth is riding the growth in mobile, which is a great place to be in. Uh, there was a recent... Uh, Report that said it was over over 100 million, uh, or sorry, over 100 billion uh, market by 2015, I believe it was for app support or for app services, uh, and so we we fall into that category of infrastructure services, and so our the success of us doesn't necessarily depend on one app being successful, just the ecosystem being successful, being healthy. Yeah. Um, one last question. How do you compete? I'm sure you have competitors. I've seen you know, support kinds of things before, but how do you compare to the competition? Yeah, so there, we've been built from mobile from the ground up. Some guys have started off on uh, web or uh, web frameworks and ported over to, to mobile. Uh, there's also some guys on the web doing support, but there's really no one that's um, presenting the package that we have. We really so not only are we gathering crash data, but we're also gathering data um, that users submit, so bugs or questions. And we don't see those as two distinct things. Uh, we want to, as, as much as possible, be able to match crash data with what users are reporting out in the field. And uh, that's really important to help you figure out what's going on and then finally tell the users, hey, we fixed this issue. So uh, th thanks for uh, showing this to me. It's really a great service for developers. and. I, I It'll help make all those apps I try a lot better. Yeah. Uh, where do I find? Where do people find or developers find more information on on uh, Criticism? So they can go to our website, uh, Criticism.com. It's spelled uniquely, so can you spell yeah, it? Yeah, so it's C R I T T E R C I S M dot com. Mm -hmm. Critter is in bug and criticism, if you can remember. Very cool. Um, and Criticism is also our Twitter handle. Uh, my handle is Andrew M Levy. Uh, and feel free to email support at criticism.com if you're interested in our Android version. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming out and showing Thanks. it to me. Thank you. Yeah.